I invite you to stand if you are able to do so in honor of the reading of the gospel lesson, which is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let's pray together, shall we? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I have a bold statement to start us off this morning. Ready? I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I do. How about you? Do you have any instances in your life that you would describe as miraculous? Moments um, that God interceded on your behalf, on the behalf of someone else, and uh, a situation turned around, and God did something that was just so amazing uh, that that you would not have looked at it and said, "Oh well, you know, these are just circumstances or lucky break or something like that." But instead, uh, those of us who claim the name Christian and follow Jesus, we would say, "That's a miracle. That's a miracle." In the Gospels, we have beautiful, great stories of Jesus performing miraculous acts. And I still believe that miracles can happen today. Uh, more than once, I have experienced the miraculous, uh, those moments that the divine intersects in our lives. I have said over and over again, uh, and you have heard me say that our son Caleb is miraculous. Uh, I uh, was like Elizabeth <laughs> in, in the story and was told that uh, that would not be possible uh, to have a child. And yet we have now a 16-year-old. A miracle is absolutely a miracle. And I suspect you have stories, maybe not of, of a child coming into your life, but, but something else uh, that is just a miracle. So our text this morning, our text this morning, this is one of the Christmas texts that we um, we love to look at, especially as we lead up to Christmas Eve. The scripture today is the one where Gabriel the angel shows up to Mary. Now, interestingly enough, there aren't that many angels in the scriptures. Uh, you can look through, there are a few here and there, um, but uh you think that there would be more, uh, especially um, considering our love of angels in, in our culture and in gift shops, right? There's tons of angels and I love angels too. Um, I love, you know, little statues and pictures and all of that. But it's interesting, even when angels are described in the scripture, uh, 
they're not described as really these beautiful sights. They sound a bit scary in their descriptions. Uh, but so nonetheless, an angel, an angel appears. The word angel actually uh, means, and, and it, in the original Greek, would be angelos. So angelos. And it means messenger. Messenger or news bringer. Angels appear when God wants a message delivered to someone. Usually the message is so strange that it can't be delivered through the normal media of communication, like scripture or inspiration. Mary gets a message that's so strange and out of the ordinary course of things in the world that God sends a heavenly messenger to deliver it. Mary has been chosen. Chosen to be the vessel through which God with us, Emmanuel, will be brought into the world. It's a miracle. But we're okay with that because we believe in miracles. We are waiting today on the threshold. We are waiting on the threshold. The last few weeks in our series, we've talked about uh, cleaning up the area, right? We're cleaning things up and things get so cluttered in our lives. And, and now we are waiting on the threshold. We are waiting on the threshold for a miracle to happen. So what does it mean that we are waiting for the miracle? What does that mean? Maybe it's easier to talk about what it doesn't mean to define what it means. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's an easy out from circumstances of my own making and choosing. That's not a miracle. How about this? Every prayer that I pray will be answered the way that I want it to be. Is that true? Is that a miracle? No. No. That's not what a miracle is. And it's not an easy out from our circumstances, especially those that we have made ourselves or chosen. What it does mean is this, that God is present in our midst. It also means this, that God can show up and lives can shift in the most indescribable of ways. It means that people can be healed. It means that God can bring life into barren situations. Not only barren people such as I was, such as Elizabeth, but there are situations that we find ourselves in, and yes, sometimes of our own making, that we find ourselves in barren situations. It seems that there is no hope, and yet God can bring life even into barren situations. That's really the story of resurrection, isn't it? Advent allows us to claim this confidently. We believe in miracles. It allows us to say we are standing on the threshold of something incredible and we're excited about what God can do. We are closer and closer to that manger. Advent opens that beautiful door for us, allows us to claim confidently that we believe in miracles. So we stand at the threshold. Come home, says the Lord to us. Come home. We hear those words cry out to us during this Advent time. Come home, beloved. Come home. In the Old Testament lesson, David wanted to build a house for God on the tallest hill in Jerusalem where God could be removed and distant 
and overlook all the people who would go out and they would be obedient to God, but God would be the overseer above them. But God chose, but God chose to build a home a little closer to the deep realities of living in this world so that we would be surprised by where God would live. God wanted to build a home where we sweat and labor, where we work and play, where we laugh and cry, where our hearts are lifted up and often broken and sometimes healed. David wanted this home on the mountain, but God wanted this home in the feed box behind an inn in the little town of Bethlehem in a grassy place where 5,000 sat and ate their fill. God wanted his home in the celebrations and dinner parties. God wanted his home in the tear-filled rooms and in the sick beds. God wanted his home in the courtrooms and prison cells and then on the streets of sorrow in Jerusalem and even on a dark hill called Calvary. And here's good news for us today. God wants God's home in your heart, in your living rooms and in kitchens and in playrooms and in bedrooms of your life. God calls us at Christmas and says, greeting, favored one, I'm coming home. I'm coming home for Christmas. Is there room for me in your crowded, busy life? Is there room for me? I'm coming home. And like any baby born into our midst, he says, I won't take up much room, but I will take up <laughs> all that you have. That sounds like a baby. <laughs> Is there still room for me? All of me and all of you. I'm coming home. <laughs> we are waiting on the threshold. And the good news is Jesus, the miracle, the miracle of humanity is coming home. I believe that there is room enough in my heart, in my life for Jesus. And I believe there's enough room in your hearts for Jesus to dwell. So we wait on the threshold for our Savior. We believe in miracles. Thanks be to God. And amen. I invite you now to join me as we affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to hear these words in an attitude of prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. 
Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, I am really looking forward to Christmas Eve. We are right around the corner from, from the miracle. And so I look forward to joining with you and joining our hearts together. We will see each other on Christmas Eve. Remember, sing along with Jenna at three, nativity service at five, the contemporary service at seven, traditional service at, at nine, and then Holy Communion with Pastor Vince and I whenever you choose to receive it. God bless you all this week. See you soon.